Hi, Facebook. How are you? It's Dr. Emily, podiatrist, human movement specialist, founder of EBFA Global, and inventor of Novosa Technology. So welcome to my office. I wanted to do a video because this was requested from me for quite a while. So I want to speak about neuropathy, peripheral neuropathy. And we're going to be addressing this from a functional perspective. Now, when I say functional perspective, that doesn't necessarily mean functional movement. It means more functional medicine. Now, functional medicine means that we're looking at not just the symptoms, but we're looking at the cause. And we're looking at the cause and appreciating the systemic effects that could be causing or uh, showing their face in the feet, foot pain, foot pathology. Now, this might not be just diabetes. I want to go even further than that and ask ourselves and have you start asking yourselves and your clients and your patients, what is the cause of that diabetes in the first place? What are these stressors that are happening in this individual's life or have been existing in this individual's life that led to increased stress responses, increased autoimmune responses? Why do they have elevated inflammation systemically, which again are going to be showing face possibly in the feet? One of those, peripheral neuropathy. Now, when we think of peripheral neuropathy, many people think of diabetes. However, I want you to think of peripheral neuropathy as it can be associated with many different causes. Uh, some of the most common causes that I see outside of diabetes, outside of nutritional deficiencies, is actually either chemo-related, so if you have any clients or patients that are undergoing chemotherapy, you can get a toxic response from the chemotherapy to the peripheral nerves. It's often stated that this is reversible, However, I have many patients who have been told it's reversible and it actually has not reversed for them and they've been experiencing this for several years. So we still have to address that chemo-related neuropathy. Another one that's very common that's not brought up a lot is in age-related neuropathy. So perhaps just you know, as we age, if you don't use it, you lose it, kind of philosophy with the nervous system. If you're in shoes perpetually and you're never getting barefoot or sensory stimulation, you are going to start to create an atrophy in the peripheral nervous system in the feet. So age-related peripheral neuropathy. And then the last one would be idiopathic. So this is one where it's just a um, process of elimination. You don't know what the cause is. I see this in a lot of young individuals where they're coming in 30, 35 years old, having severe pain in the feet, and there is an unknown cause. It's very frustrating to the patient, and it's important for us as practitioners to have a deeper understanding of what we can do with these patients. So you have a client, you have a patient, they're experiencing peripheral neuropathy. You're asking yourself, is it diabetes? Is it chemo? Is it nutritional? Is it idiopathic? Is it some other reason we're doing that investigation? Then you want to think, is it sensory or motor? Most of the neuropathy that you will encounter is going to be sensory related. So this means that they still have the action and the contraction and they're able to still coordinate foot to core sequencing in their feet or in their body because it's the sensory deficit that is decreased. Now, prolonged sensory deficits can lead to motor deficits. So just because you have a sensory neuropathy doesn't mean your, your feet are going to perpetually stay strong and motor connected, so you still need to respect that sensory can be affected. Why I mention this though is because again, sensory neuropathy, this is primarily what you're going to be encountered with. You should definitely be getting those clients or patients short footing, you should be getting them barefoot. Yes, get your neuropathy patients and clients barefoot. Stimulate the skin and the muscles in the bottom of the feet. Now, other way that you can look at this is that a lot of sensory neuropathy is then broken down into small nerve and large nerve. Small nerve we can think as our mechanoceptors. So these are the skin in the bottom of the feet. This is primarily what I speak about with barefoot training. So you can have a deficit in just the small nerves, which this is actually most of what I see, that these patients are uh, having a decreased sensitivity to vibration, which is huge. They have a decreased sensitivity to two-point discrimination. 
They might also have a decreased sensitivity to texture and to pain. So most of what kind of classic podiatry that we see from a neuropathy perspective is they're starting to get deficits in the small nerves, i.e. mechanoceptors in the bottom of the feet. Now, for anyone that follows my work, you know how powerful the mechanoceptors are on the bottom of the feet to posture. So diabetics who have neuropathy are at a 15 times greater risk of a fall than a diabetic without neuropathy. So the skin in the bottom of the feet is very powerful for postural control. So do you have or are you dealing with small nerve mechanoceptor? Do you know what that's going to mean? The larger nerves are going to be outside of the bottom of the foot. This is going to be the tibial nerve, the perineal nerve, the superficial, the deep perineal nerve. This is what's perhaps um, controlling the perineal reaction time. That would be a large nerve. Okay, just so we have a slight difference there. Next topic that I want to focus on is the symptoms that the patient is experiencing. So there's two ways that you can classify these two groups is that patient client is either experiencing a positive symptom or they're experiencing negative symptoms. Now, positive symptoms are uh, where it's turned up. So it's pain, it's like electric shooting, it's um, crawly feeling, it's a zing, uh, it's burning, radiating, whatever words you would describe from kind of like pain description, hot, uh, all of those are positive, positive symptoms, okay? Now the opposite, negative symptoms, is numbness. So you're void of a symptom, really. So when we look at the recommendations for these patients, when I look at them particularly as a clinician, and perhaps that patient is told to go on a certain medication, most of the medications that are out there for neuropathies, diabetes, chemo-related, idiopathic, doesn't matter the type of neuropathy, nerve pain in general, it is going to be blocking the positive symptom. So if I have a patient with the burning and the radiating and the burning and just oh, this pain, pain, pain is just constantly stimulating them, the medications such as gabapentin, Lyrica, some antidepressants are often used as well, those are designed to block the pain signal of a positive symptom. If a patient who has neuropathy and does not have any positive symptoms, they only have negative symptoms, which is numbness, that patient should not be on a medication such as Lyrica, Gabapentin, or any of the antidepressants. Because again, their efficacy or their mechanism of action is to block the positive symptom. Okay? It's the negative ones that really I focus on or that you can focus on as a health and movement specialist because you're seeking other alternative options. So with the negative, you're looking at how can I actually stimulate the nerves and perhaps increase nerve growth factors so that I can actually repair and regenerate nerve. That's what I approach with these negative symptom patients. Now, before we go into those real quick, oftentimes you want to then think, what is the cause of this patient's neuropathy? Is it inflammatory? Is it stress-related? Is it something systemic? Is it that nutritional deficiency? So you really want to think of the cause. Why I want to emphasize inflammation is because their nerve symptoms are never going to decrease unless you address the inflammation that is around that neural sheath. That may be through the relationship with the medical practitioner. Can you do, you know, class four lasers? Dr. Pierce uh, highly speaks about this a lot. Decreasing the inflammation perisheath of that nerve is very important. If you do not decrease that inflammation, you're never going to really fully decrease the symptoms of that neuropathy. So if we're looking at the alternative options outside of medication for neuropathy, these are vitamins. These vitamins are targeted at increasing nerve growth factor. These vitamins are targeted towards decreasing inflammation systemically. These vitamins are targeted toward addressing what causes the neuropathy in the first place. If you have a diabetic who has uncontrolled elevated glucose and they have a advanced rate of glycation and free radical formation and then that's creating AGEs that target the nerve and then it's toxic and then we kind of get this oxidative stress level, then you're going to be looking at vitamins that block the glycation process. 
An example of that would be alizine. Alizine blocks the glycation process. Benfotiamine, which is an activated form of vitamin B1, blocks the glycation process that creates free radicals that is toxic to nerves. So perhaps you want to include those. If you know that this is primarily an inflammatory driven peripheral neuropathy, then you want to look at upping that client or patient's systemic anti-inflammatory vitamins. Is that turmeric? Is it chlorophyll? Is it omegas? Is it um, bromelain? What are you going to be doing from a systemic inflammatory perspective? I'm always on the side of going much more natural versus prescribing and having constant influx of uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories or steroids. I do not want to knock out this patient's immune system. Now, next thing that we would look at is the vitamins that increase nerve growth factor. The big ones here, big, big, big ones is folate, but I'm going to give you a specific one, L-methylfolate. So when your body methylates vitamins, it is essentially activating them. So you want to make sure that you're taking the active form of folic acid. Um, you probably have heard of folic acid around pregnancy and when, you're, when women are trying to get pregnant, they should up their intake of folic acid because it's nerve protective for the fetus and that's why they put folic acid in cereal. However, a lot of people do not have the precursor to actually activate that folic acid. So when you're looking at folate that you want to start taking for yourself, for your clients, for patients, you want to make sure that it is methylated. L-methylfolate. The dosage of the research for that, that increases nerve growth factor, is 3,000 micrograms per day. Um, I personally recommend my patients take 5,000 micrograms per day, and there's a great supplement by Life Extension that has that dosage. The second one that is big is acetyl L-carnitine. Acetylocarnitine. So acetylocarnitine has also been shown through research to increase nerve growth factor. Both of those are very beneficial if you have a client or patient that has the negative symptoms of neuropathy. And then the last one that's very strongly based around research as well is R-lipoic acid. Not alpha-lipoic acid. You want to make sure that you're taking R-lipoic acid. I will include the dosages on this, but I have all of this written in my book, Barefoot Strong. The last thing that I want to focus on is what can you do with these patients to keep those nerves stimulated, to keep those nerves challenged? Again, with the philosophy, if you don't use it, you lose it. So we want to be looking at vibration training, whole body vibration. That's going to help keep those nerves and the mechanoreceptors in the bottom of the feet stimulated. We want to be looking at using any of the Noboso products. Noboso, again, is targeted to the mechanoceptors. So it's stimulating the two-point discrimination. It's giving that constant feedback with the insoles, great research with neuropathy in improving posture. And then the last one is barefoot stimulation and foot activation. So short foot exercise for these patients, for these clients, to keep them connected to their feet. Now, if you have a client or patient that has neuropathy and it's all the way advanced and they don't feel their legs and their feet all the way up into their tubal tuberosity, that's pretty advanced, right? So what is the reality of that situation? The reality of that situation for that patient or client that is numb all the way up to their knees is to teach them a new way, a new strategy to control their center of gravity. I actually did research around this when I was a medical student and I was teaching Pilates to diabetics who had neuropathy all the way up into the tibial tuberosity. So teaching them and showing them that if they use the proprioceptive input from the thoracolumbar fascia and the connection and the awareness into their pelvic floor and their TBA, can that give them enhanced postural control to decrease their fall risk? Absolutely, 100%, I think that these patients should be connecting into their core, especially if they cannot feel their feet. If they're so far gone and you're just creating something that's going to enhance their quality of life, go after the core, 100%. So again, we're looking at this, little recaps, we're all on the same page, I know it was maybe a lot of information, is neurology. When you're looking at the neuropathy, please, please try not to just address the symptom. Work with your, your team and your allied professionals to, to look at why they got it in the first place. 
if it is a chemo related, obviously now we're on the side end that you would be thinking of, well, how do they get the cancer? Is there a stressor within their body, within their lifestyle that is really what increased their risk to cancer? Same thing for autoimmune diseases, same thing for allergies, same thing for um, anything idiopathic. Why is the body attacking itself? When in doubt, it's usually stress. So kind of finding whatever that causes. And then we're looking at and we're, we're assessing that patient or that client, is it sensory? Is it motor? Is it small nerve? Is it large nerve? Do they have positive symptoms? Do they have negative symptoms? Are they taking prescription medication that is blocking the positive? Or are we recommending vitamins to increase nerve growth factor and address the ones that have negative symptoms? Are we looking to increase nerve growth factor while decreasing inflammation and while decreasing oxidative stress? And then are we integrating things to keep them connected to their feet from a vibration standpoint, from a textural standpoint, and from a intrinsic foot muscle standpoint? I hope this helped. I hope it was a great summary. I hope that it took a little bit of a um, new spin, a holistic spin that was not just based on blocking the pain with a medication and never, ever getting out of your shoes, which is the worst advice for anyone who has neuropathy. I hope that you guys are doing amazing. Stay barefoot strong, and I will see you online soon again. Take care.